Hey guys, check this out. I am officially now sponsored by Dubby. Dubby is a clean energy drink made to give you focus with no crash. If you guys are like me, you're always needing a burst of energy, especially with one full crash. Dubby contains vitamins, amino acids, a nootropic, and 150 milligrams of caffeine. It keeps me awake with no jitters, guys. Check it out. Merch link is in the bio. Dubby. Oh, what? I'm on? Oh, sorry, guys. So, it is DKM of the Alliance, guys. Here by myself so far because Jay has decided that he should spend time with his family. Go to something his girls are involved in. Like, that's going to keep them out of therapy when they're in their 30s. And I have no idea where Jaden is. He's probably at school or work or... Walking down the street, homeless, I, I don't know. And so for right now, it is the DKM show. Hey, jamming music man, I, you got that right. And so what do you guys want to talk about? It can be wrestling related. It can be NWA specific, WWE, AEW, CM Punk, ratings. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> a cheerful host. Oh, Lou. I'm always cheerful. I'm always a happy man. Just look at me. Is this not the very definition of cheerful? I think so. So you're right. So anyway, so let's talk about what I want to talk about since you guys are uh, not helping me with any subjects yet. Let's talk about CM Punk. There we go, jamming music man. I mean, I think CM Punk returning to the WWE is a good thing overall. I don't think he'll have the same issues he had in AEW because, well, AEW is run by an insane person. And they would, on one hand, rely on Punk to help them. And then on the other hand, uh, the other people there who will remain the executive VPs for reasons I don't fully understand, uh, didn't necessarily like that, you know, somebody as big as him was coming in. So, but WWE is structured differently. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people going, oh, Punk sold out. He said he'd never go back. Blah, blah, blah. He hates Triple H. Blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, he and Triple H probably have a professional relationship and not a good friend. And there are probably times that each would have rather uh, given the other a pile driver for real than looked at the other one. 
But we're in a different world now. This isn't the same company he worked for 10 years ago that he walked out on and then got fired on his wedding day. Uh, that was a different animal. That was Vince McMahon. And, you know, Vince McMahon's word was law. And Vince McMahon had was already starting to go senile by that point and had some strange creative ideas. So, you know, here we go. It's a different company. He said, he said, I'm, I'm here to make money and not friends. And folks, that's what you're in business for. You're here to make money. I, I work as a software administrator, specifically in ERP software. So the software that runs our, our purchasing and our general ledger and our accounts payable and our AR and our payroll and HR and everything like that. And I always used to say, especially when I worked in a one man shop for about five years, I always used to say after we do an upgrade or anything like that, that the very first thing that we were going to uh, focus on was any problems with payroll. Because if I don't get paid, then I'm not doing this. And Bobby Heenan always used to say, girl, one thing would tell him, he goes, he goes, if you're not in this for the money, then you're a fool. And so, CM Punk took advantage of a situation to make more money. And WWE and TKO, or whatever the name of the bigger corporate entity is, they think that he can make them more money. And so that's enough for them to come together. The locker room's not run the same as it is in AEW, so I don't think he'll be the locker room problem that he is. Is he a whiner and complainer? Uh, probably. But just get to, you know, everybody will have to adapt to that. Uh, hold on just a second. Uh, so, we'll, you know, we'll see where that goes. We'll see what happens. Uh, I don't know what what do you guys say here? So, oh man, you guys been talking today. So let's see. Uh oh, apparently um I'm loose spirit animal. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, Jeremy reminds everyone to like and share and subscribe and all those good things. So yes, please do so. Sam Retro says, boo CM Funk. Vixens goes, cool moment Survivor Series, no matter what happens in the future. And let me tell you, that's brilliant use by WWE in Survivor Series. WWE had already sold out the building. Part of it may have been on stories that Punk was going to be, hey, Jaden's alive. Hey, how'd I get here? Uh... Somebody's watching in the background when they can. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm here. So he's supposed to join us. So anyway, <clears throat> I'll, I'll get your opinion on this. I thought the way that they brought CM Punk back at Survivor Series was perfect because they'd already sold out the show saying he wasn't going to be there, even though a lot of people suspected he might. And so he didn't need to wrestle. He didn't need to come out and do a big promo. He needed to send the, the fans home happy. And that's what they did. There goes the music. There he goes and stands. And, you know, the crowd's going nuts and shouting CM Punk and shouting Chicago, the guy that was there hugging his neck and everything. I mean, I thought that was a brilliant use of them. There is a tendency in professional wrestling in modern terms to, uh, I don't know, a proper term but to blow your um everything <laughs> all well, at one not, time can we say yeah that? i was trying not to say that but yeah no, that's no, exactly no, no. what it is. i mean it's it's what it is 
And there's a tendency to do that, unfortunately, in professional wrestling. Um, and a lot of AEW's biggest, I think, faults are its tendency to give you too much at once. And the WWE just did perfectly. It gave just enough. Now, it probably sold more tickets thinking he might be there. It probably sold some more pay-per-views thinking he will be there. It probably garnered more interest thinking it would be there. But they made it all the way to the end to make you think, oh, um, you know, it wasn't coming. You know, this was a great pay-per-view anyway. A lot of people were doing live reactions talking about how much they enjoyed it. And then all of a sudden, when they seen the little the little logo pop up and everything, thinking it's over, and then hearing the music, they absolutely lost it. They did. And that's what you want a crowd to do. The object in professional wrestling is to give people just enough to make them want more. I'll give an example of it right now that DK and I both were speaking about. There's barely anything out there on the new Godzilla movie except for what's in the trailer. And the trailer doesn't show much. But man, do I want to gobble that all up and see everything in that Godzilla movie. Even if it is the subtitles, which has never bothered me in the past. But some people do find that interesting. Or uh, a turnoff, I mean, that they have to read. But I can't wait to see the Godzilla Minus One movie. They gave me just enough to make me want all of it. Yeah, I mean, that, hey, I'm a guy that doesn't mind spoilers, you know, in movies and stuff like that. It doesn't bother me. In fact, I kind of like knowing where it might be going because it it'll actually kind of keep me interested in the movie. Because I go, well, I know this is supposed to happen. Once it happened, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, I knew the great uh, Darth Vader secret of Empire Strikes Back before I went and saw the movie. In fact, I was told so calmly, I didn't know that it was actually like supposed to be a big deal. <laughs> Because my cousin told me, she was just like, oh, yeah, Vader's Luke's dad. Like, oh, really? Well, that's interesting. <laughs> and it wasn't until after the fact that people were like, oh, you're not supposed to know stuff like that. I go, I'm not. I, go, I thought it was great knowing. I kept waiting for that scene in the movie. Yeah, but in this, and, and with Godzilla, you... You kind of have a gist what's going on. You kind of thought he was coming. You kind of re- thought he might have show up, and it makes sense and stuff. But there was just that doubt. Yeah, you know, and a lot of people figure because of the way they were doing. You know, I told, I told somebody, I go, probably Jay. I said, man, they're doing everything they can to make you think CM Punk might be there, that he might replace Randy Orton, you know, and everything, and. They did that in the match when Randy Orton took forever to get out. It wasn't initially out there with them. They did right. that. They teased that, making you think that was going to happen. Yeah, and so everything happened. And at the end, yeah, it seemed to end a little bit early and everything like that. But I was waiting, waiting for Randy Orton to just to RKO everybody. <laughs> I, yeah, seriously. I thought I'd go, I'd go, you know, he's going to shake Cody's hand, RKO him, and then, you know, just go down the thing and do everything and, stand there and pose. And so that's what I was doing. I was like, oh, I guess not. I guess, you know, this is the end. And I was literally getting ready to, I was grabbing the remote to turn it off when the music hit. And not only did the music hit, but the graphic hit too. So there wasn't a question. Yeah. You know, and you do that. And uh, go back to what you're saying about the Godzilla movie. On this particular Godzilla movie, I'm like most people, I don't want any spoilers. It's like, I, I want to experience this movie because I don't know what they're doing. All I know is what I see in the commercial and one comment that I got that it's basically like a spiritual successor or a spiritual reboot of the original movie, which is perfectly fine by me. That's all the information I need. I love the original movie. Yeah, the only thing I've heard is that someone suggested there might be two Godzillas, but that seems to have been shot down. Yeah, that was yeah. early on in speculation, but since then there's been, it, it kind of seems like that's gone away. Like that was more like uh, somebody just starting a rumor and then some people picked up on it. But then as time got out, it kind of got it. Like it's been out in Japan and I still don't know what's going on. 
Yeah, they came know. out tonight for in select theaters. I still don't know what's going on. And uh, I got my tickets. We're going to see it Saturday. So my, my son and I, my oldest son and I, are going to go see it Saturday. I'm going to see it Sunday, and I can't wait. I've been looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to this. Then, I mean, as much as I like the legendary Godzilla movies, and I've seen them all in the theater, um, I, I, I really, I can't wait to see this one. I, this one's more interesting to me than the next Godzilla Kong X Kong movie. Yeah, I don't know. Something about that has not excited me. It's like mm, they might be starting to, you know, jump the sharks, so to speak. Sam well, hopefully, Retro- it's a radioactive shark. Yeah, it's a kaiju shark. Uh, Sam Retro points out that even Bret Hart returns to the WWE at one more. Uh, also pointed out Vince has said anything can happen. In WWE money talks. Bruno returned. Brett returned. Ultimate Warrior returned. Yeah, the only one except Nails. And Nails is the only one who hasn't come back yet. Yeah, that one you know, probably happened. Uh, anyway. David Schultz. <laughs> David Schultz, yeah. Uh, let's see. James Jackson, James H. Jackson Jr. says AEW equals USA version of uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling tournament tournaments. And more matches and then more tournaments. Uh, Jeremy says, Jaden, he's watching Monarch right now, which I watched the first two episodes last night. A Monarch? Uh, uh, yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I don't have the Apple TV, so I'm going to wait till they all come out and I'll, and I'll find alternate routes to watch them all at the same time. Yeah. Well, I watched the first two and it's a little bit confusing and a little bit interesting because they're taking... There's basically two stories being told simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah, and one's 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 in the past and one's current, and so we're getting a little bit there. But I was shocked to find out that the reason that the guy looks so much like a young Kurt Russell is because it's like his son or grandson. Yeah, it's his son, <laughs> Wyatt <laughs> Russell. Yeah, he actually was in um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's see. Noob says, what about the new Godzilla and Kong movie? You know, I'm hoping it'll be good. Yeah. I, 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 and they've been good so far, but I'm a little worried. So Here's the problem. I like the original Godzilla, but there wasn't enough Godzilla. I like the second one, but there was too much people, especially right. Millie Bobby Brown and Anguish Face. I have nothing against Millie Bobby Brown, but that's the only thing she did in the movie was make Anguish Face. <laughs> right. And then the third one was better. Because it had less people, and it was a little preposterous, but I, I kind of enjoyed that. It is weird as it sounds. So I'm looking forward to it. I was hoping for a more earthly grounded Godzilla, personally. When they, you know, but I guess you can't really do that when you got a giant monster from outer space and a giant robotic cyborg Godzilla. You only can do as much as you can do, you know. Right. And so let's see what else. Shin Godzilla was long and boring. Uh, I don't disagree. Did you like Shin Godzilla? I really didn't. I watched it because I've never missed a Godzilla movie. But it'll, I'm going to put it with um, uh, what was the one with That'd where the I, you know I'd rather, I watched that at least more than once. It's over time. It's almost become nostalgic now, where it's it's almost enjoyable. Not good, but it's <laughs> almost enjoyable. But um, no, I was thinking of the one where the kid was uh, getting bullied, and he kept thinking he was Godzilla. Oh yeah, where he had conversations with Godzilla's son. Yeah, yeah, little Minya. I if I never see that movie again, it'll be too soon. <laughs> you can say that again. I forgot about that one. Thanks a lot. I had blotted that out of my mind. I like. I like Ibra and Titanosaurus. They're they're far less obnoxious than that. Uh, apparently, Jeremy was shocked to find out Vader was Luke's son. Jeremy was also that's why he was hanging around to see if Orton turned. Wait, Vader's Luke's son? That's a twist. Or uh, <laughs> Vader was Luke's dad. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not a guy who's not wearing his glasses read stuff and is dyslexic. Uh, but anyway, also was hanging around to see if Orton turned. I, I think a lot of people were hanging around to see if Orton turned. Yeah, apparently he RKO'd the wellness policy. Look at him right now. <laughs> I'm kidding. God, he's, 
Uh, I guess technically he wasn't in WWE. <laughs> they were probably all legal and prescribed for his back. Uh, and that was one thing you could tell. You could even tell in this match with Dominic on Monday night was, you know, he's they're kind of treating him with kid gloves. I don't know how long he'll be around or how much he'll actually do. At this point, though, his RKO is the only thing he has to do, and maybe that 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 second rope DDT, everything else, yeah. and that power slam. His power, him and Dustin Rhodes have two of my favorite power slams. Well, they do because they do it right. That's that's one thing. Oh, let's see. Vixen uses Godzilla's real name of Gogeta. Gogeta, uh, which means whale gorilla. Yes, or gorilla uh, whale actually. Also pointed out that uh, Jeff Jarrett returned. Yeah, Jeff Jarrett can return. Uh, you mean the Meg kind of radioactive shark? Uh, I'd have to go back and know what we're talking about at that moment. Radioactive uh, shark, do, 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 do. Radioactive shark, do, 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 do. Don't Sorry. do that. Hey, uh, you know, all of you know that I follow the royal families and you know have a website you know, dedicated to what's that website again? Royalty and monarchy, unofficial royalty.com. So go there and check it out. But, uh, this last week, uh, the King was hosting a state dinner with, uh, the president and first lady of South Korea. And he brought up a K-pop girls group called Blackpink. <laughs> now, this might surprise some of you to know, but this 55-year-old old fat man in Texas doesn't really keep up with the K-pop scene. Really? I'm very shocked. I know. It, it, it might surprise you didn't learn that, but I don't. And so I've had to, like, dig through the interwebs, you know, this last week to figure out just – who who in the heck and what are a black pink? And th there's actually a funny scene in the state dinner where Charles mentions them in their speech, and apparently they did not know they were going to be mentioned. As they showed one of them, and they're like, what? <laughs> so I, I actually listened to two of their songs, and that is why I am not very knowledgeable about K-pop. <laughs> Because I, I listen to them, it's like, nope, I am not the intended audience for this. Stay tuned to uh, DKM FWTX on TikTok to watch him do his next TikTok dance to K-pop. Yeah, no. Watch the seventies Godzilla because they could do a drop kick. You know what? I just sent out to DK too. There's a modern remake of Godzilla versus. Uh, Megalon, and he, I'm gonna spoil this. He, Godzilla does a drop, he can out one too, and it was freaking awesome. Yeah, if you can on. find that link, put it in the uh, chat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'd have to look for that. Uh, see, Orton and WWE were on a break at the moment, Jayden. Yeah, so so it, it didn't matter. You know, I guess Jay showed up and then didn't show up. So I don't know what. He's, he's, he's RKO'd him. That's what happened. He's out late. He's laid out right now. Yeah, I figured he butt joined us. Uh, All right. So, what are we talking about NWA wise? Oh, uh, well, I was trying to avoid NWA, but. All right. Let's, it's been long enough since we didn't meet last week. And so, a few things have happened. Camille's basically confirmed she's not under, uh, or she's going to, you know, be out of Explore. contract at the first of the year that, you know, basically saying she's looking and willing to accept offers. And until she gets offers, she'd be willing to work with the NWA. Which and, is perfect. You get a couple things out of them and it, out of her. And then if she happy with their 97 year old, uh, week long tapings where they try to get so much in between, she could be signed with whatever company and still appear on NWA television. That's true. Now, if you were her, and it was more important for you right now 
to be on screen than make the most money. Where would you want to end up? WWE, AEW, the Reborn TNA. Um, all right. If you're trying to be seen, TNA is not the place to be seen. It's not because of anything wrong. I'm, I've hear many people say how much it's improved and everything else. Problem is nobody gets the station. Uh, I think if I still had cable, if I remember, the station was like two levels of upgraded stations after you know the initial group. Yeah, so right. that means I'd have to grow two more packages added to what I would initially had to have gotten it. Which I think we did anyway, but I never watched it. <laughs> Second, um, AEW right now is the Titanic. Rumors being that the WWE might be going to Time Warner, to I'm sorry, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, and there's just negotiations for them to show up then on either TBS, TNT, or both. And part of the negotiations allegedly is because the person in charge is a fan of CM Punk and wants him on TV. And that will... Yeah, that can matter. I don't know if it'll kill AEW, but it will definitely hamper anything. Unless Tony Khan offers a shit ton of money, and again, money you said is not the thing that's worried about television, WWE is your major option. Unless you want to go the Matt Cardona route, which I don't know where my Canadian accent all of a sudden popped up, but um, and do... NWA and, and MLW and and Impact and all the big indies and just tour around and do everything you can. You know, Cordona's making a very nice living out of it right now. He's apparently making more than he was making at WWE. And while I don't believe his NWA run was really good, I actually kind of like what he's doing in MLW. It's a little bit I get to watch of it. And when he was doing some decent stuff in, in Impact, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of his GCW stuff, but I'm not a, you know, GCW isn't my style of wrestling, but I've, the other companies he worked with, I think he got something good out of them. And also the big indies he does like the, uh, the gathering in, um, in the Carolinas this for Thanksgiving weekend. Was it WrestleCade? Mm -hmm. You know, he's gotten his name out there. He's probably gotten himself more over now than he ever was in the WWE. And of course that WWE TV time helps tremendously in that fact, but he's even worked for AEW when it was actually a, something, you know, useful to, for your career to do. So, you know, maybe Camille can go that route, but in reality though, I think the WWE would be her best step forward. Okay. I want to be careful how I put this. because I don't mean an insult here, but if she were to go, if she were to go to WWE, she'd go to NXT. I mean, she's, she doesn't have the name value to jump straight to the main roster. But do you think they would Jane Cargill her in the sense that Jade was, you know, like supposed to be this big thing. They were treating her like a big star. And then the joke was, and then they saw her wrestle and decided, well, eh, maybe a little more polishing needs to be done. Well, Jade, it, Jane Cargill Jane. is a big star. Um, the problem is her wrestling ability doesn't reach her star potential. But it's, I don't think it's a bad thing for them to put Jane, Jane on... Uh, Jade, I don't know, whatever her name is. Jane. Jane. I, I don't think it's a bad thing to put her on NXT and give her more polishing anyway, because it was obvious she needed it. I don't think um, Camille needs that much polish polishing, but I think a trip to the NXT would definitely get her more used to the WWE style. I I'm a hockey fan. I like pr hockey. And one of the things that annoys me is when they have the first round draft picks, especially early, early first round, and immediately put them into the lineup and then don't give them any chance to acclimate. I think there should be a one-year policy for all new players to spend time in the AHL so they can learn like travel schedules and the, and the, and the plan and the way the company works and stuff like that. I think the same thing with the WWE. 
for the people that aren't big, big names, they should spend some time at NXT, even if it's just a few months to get themselves acclimated to the systems. So they're not going into a big culture shock and do something stupid and mess up unwritten rules and get themselves in a uh, negative situation where they never get a chance. Yeah. Um, and the fact that Camille size, I think plays great because other than Jane Cargill, there's not anybody really her size, even Rhea Ripley. And I think with her size, I think that's something unique that you work with because then you got Charlotte, you got Becky, you got, uh, Bailey, you got Rhea Ripley, you got all those that she could work with and kind of physically dominate with possibly the exception of Rhea. All right. Look, looking at the chat here, there's some stuff coming up. Uh, Vixen says, do you think AEW will become TNA if they aren't on Warner? And I think they're, I think they're already there. Yeah, I kind of do too. And uh, James H. Jackson goes, so could it end up being AEW on Honor Club? Uh, maybe. Uh, Sam Retro, yeah, Camille is a much better wrestler than Jade. Well, yeah. Uh, There's yeah, a lot of people I mean, that are better wrestlers than Jade, but they don't have that star presence. Camille has a good chunk of that, but she, and she's a way better wrestler, but she doesn't have Jane's name value. And, you know, let's remember that WWE is its own particular style of sports entertainment. And so that's why I'm saying, you know, we can sit there and go, this person's a better wrestler than that person. But that doesn't mean they don't want to get them trained up in their version, their style of wrestling. And, you know, I, I told somebody, I go, it had been so long since I had seen uh, Brian Danielson outside of the WWE ring that when he first went to AEW, I was kind of like shocked to remember all the stuff that he could do, but didn't do in the WWE because that's not what their style was. Again, though, it's about blowing your load. A lot of wrestlers do that. They could do so much, but they doesn't have to. I always equate it to when it rains so hard, none of the wet water absorbs into the ground. <laughs> and that's what uh, I think what happens with a lot of wrestlers who don't understand that you have to let it absorb before it means anything. Right. Dave Scooby says she could be the insurance policy for the new uh, SmackDown GM. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably That'd be funny. Hard, but that, that I'm sure they've shared a ham sandwich in the past. Yeah. That would actually be interesting. Uh, Willie Bones has WWE sucks, so you know it's hard to do that. Sam Retro, Tom's ex wife versus current wife, one day. Uh, that could be an interesting matchup. Uh, do you think Tom will go with her? Do you think he'll be welcome back? I mean, if they, uh, well, honestly, that he welcome anybody back as long as they, they think they can make money out of it, so I guess that's the thing. He's still on. He still has a contract in the NWA, so it wouldn't be immediately like if, like if she jumps in the spring. Let's say, it would probably be a year or so, and I don't know. And I think honestly, I think some of it would depend on how he's used in the NWA. Can they get him to a point that he looks like a a star there? They make him look like a star there. He's going to be more valuable to the WWE, whether they, even if it's not to be a big star. Right, and that, and that's my point. But WWE, if they look at him and go, "Oh man, he's becoming something there in in the NWA," then you know that just makes makes him more attractive. And uh, so you know, we'll we'll see. So MLW, and to a lesser extent, Impact or TNA, sorry, uh, AEW. And NWA are honestly just a developmental program, the developmental program to the developmental program. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in that statement. So, I don't know. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about, though, we brought it up talking about AEW. Uh, their ratings are crashing. Now, some of it's them being up against. Some of it's them being up against uh, other sports, but 
when they went up against SmackDown, I mean, Collision, SmackDown had like 10 times the viewership. Yeah, but I don't, I don't blame that. I think that's more of an anomaly. Yes, it was 10 times the viewership, but they're not on the same night. And there was intrigue building into Survivor Series. And it was an established audience on SmackDown at the established network at the established time. And right now, the WWE is a hotter product. Yeah, Even if you don't have, I mean, just look right now. Three returns at Survivor Series that have people talking. Randy Orton, CM Punk, and believe it or not, our truth People are excited to see our truth back, even if he is doing stupid stuff. Which, honestly, that's kind of his niche. But, but and he laughs all the way to the bank. That's what I always yep. tell people. LA Knight is hot right now. Rhea Ripley and the... Um, what is the faction? Judgment Day. Judgment Day, yeah. They're hot right now. Even though they've cooled down a little bit, the, the bloodline is hot right now. Cody Rhodes is hot right now. You know, well, I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's sizzling. I could feel a little bit of the heat, you know. But you know, this this brings up something important to me, and I want to get your view as somebody who works in the business. When CM Punk made his appearance, yes, at SummerSlam, we noted the crowd was cheering CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk. At Survivor Series, yes, yes. And the one guy who was shouting Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. Love that guy already. Uh, they didn't shout WWE, WWE. They didn't shout ROH or ECW or AEW. They didn't shout the promotion. They shouted the wrestler. And we're seeing that a little more in WWE now. They the cheer, stars again. They cheer punk. They cheer uh, Cody. You know, they, they, they're chanting, you know, L.A. Knight. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're chanting after the wrestlers. And you said it. You just said it. And I'll let you expand on it in a second. Because they're creating stars now. Or they're, just, they're putting these people out of stars. Now, Punk just is. Whether you like him or don't like him, doesn't matter. He's got enough of a following that he's a star. And so, you know, t tell me, you know, is, is it more important for your wrestler to be the star or the promotion? Oh, 100% the wrestler. The reason ECW worked is because it was a counterculture thing. In a way, same thing for AEW was a counterculture thing. It was the anti-establishment. But people don't people watch UFC fights, but they spend way more money to see Conor McGregor. Right. People watch boxing. People still enjoy boxing, but they pay way more to see anybody with the last name Paul right now. Or even um, um, Mayweather. They pay to see stars. They may enjoy um, the, the, the product and the company. But the thing is, enjoying the product is, is good for going to buy the seat. But enjoying the wrestler is going to buy the merchandise. Enjoying the product might make you buy a pay-per-view. But enjoying the wrestler is going to get you the meet and greet. You know, to pay the ticket to see him in person. It's not the. It's not that hey, a WWE guy is going to be here. Buy your tickets. It's LA Knight is going to be at this thing doing a signing. So the reason is when you make a personal connection, when you get yourself over, you're making that connection and you're selling out more money making opportunities. So the WWE under Vince McMahon believed the WWE was the show. It's like Ringling Brothers. You know, you go, you pay to see Ringling Brothers, yeah, and then you get some clowns. Who the ring? Who the ring guy is? 
Yeah. You're coming to see the. You're trying to see the entire production. Same thing for cats. Usually you go to see cats. But some of the biggest Broadway stars have made the role. The role didn't make the biggest Broadway stars. There's still to this day we associate certain television star people, certain movie people, certain acting people, sort of music people with an individual, not the entire thing. We still associate William Shatner with Star Trek, you know, because he was bigger than Star Trek. Even though Star Trek's still around and everybody loves Star Trek, and then there's other people out there. When people go to these conventions, they want to see their favorites, the biggest stars. The um, the a lot of the actors do the conventions, but they have headliners, and the headliners is what really draws the attraction. And that's what the WWE needs right now. This isn't Vince McMahon's WWE. This is TKO, aka uh, Endeavor, who know that what you need to do to actually draw money. I've always said it that the UFC was the biggest, best wrestling promotion in the entire world. And they're like, what do you mean? It's not predetermined. No, but they knew how to make stars. They knew how to market stars. They knew how to market programs. They knew how to market feuds. They knew how to market everything. So you want to go see these individuals do what they do. You always had your favorites in UFC. You always had your least favorites, the ones you wanted to see get their butts kicked. It's the same thing with boxing. Boxing was best when it had stars. And it's the same thing with professional wrestling. They know how to market it. They build it. I've had a disagreement because somebody doesn't understand what I'm trying to say when I say that the WWE is a more professional company. And they're going to say, oh, but what about Sean? What about Hunter? And look what all the stuff they did. <laughs> I'm talking professional. I'm talking professional as in they know how to make money and they know how to help people make the most out of themselves. Yes, there's always going to be egos and little stupid stuff and baby stuff in professional wrestling. There always will be. But the people in charge now aren't McMahon. McMahon's not the end-all, be-all. It's not Triple H. It's not Shawn Michaels. It's the people who run Endeavor. I can't think of the guy's name. I just went to say and I can't think of it now. But these people actually want to do things to make money. And another thing that people said, too, is when CM Punk's like, I'm here to make money, not not friends. He wasn't talking about like, oh, he's only in the company for the money. Making money is a wrestling term. That means actually drawing a crowd, actually putting on good matches, actually doing the right thing for the business. That's what making money in wrestling means. Well, there's the people who's like Kevin Nash who just are only in it for the money. When he says he's in there making money, that means he's actually doing what's right for the business and best for businesses to steal a cliched line to actually do the right things, not some main child uh, randomly hugging somebody in the middle of an interview or going on a cocaine filled ranch or anything like that. I'm talking about actually there to, to make money, not just to have a bunch of play toys that you can do what you try to do. All right. I want to go back to the comments for a bit so I don't get too far behind on them. Uh, let's see here. Matthew Underwood, my eight-year-old son, just watched Eli Drake versus Mr. Anderson high voltage match. He's an LA Knight fan. And he said, I can tell this was from way back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, to be eight again. Uh, they were chilling, cheering me on Eli Drake in that match. Never looked to wrestlers for more moral purity or wrestling for moral guidance. I'm not sure what we're talking about at that moment, but that's always good advice, Lou. Uh, let's see. Uh, James H. Jackson, ROH before Con bought it. At the fans chanted ROH, ROH, ROH. Yeah, and that's true. That's one where the promotion was literally bigger than most of the people they have wrestling there. And Height wise, too. <laughs> true. And some of that was actually, you know, to be honest, to call back to their past. You know, uh, Danielson, Samoa Joe, you know, that era. Uh, let's see. New likes 
A WWE, AEW, and the NWA. All right. Because that was in response to Willie. Willie doesn't doesn't like me. Well, he says the McMahon family still has strong influence in the WWE. Uh, really, Lee Hunter. Uh, there's been talk that Vince has basically been sidelined. Neutered is the term that's out there. Yeah, well. That, that was like, chemically castrated a long time ago. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, so, yeah, he's been he's been sidelined. So it's really just it's really just Hunter, you know. McMahon had been starting to interfere in creative again. And once the merger took place, uh, can't, I'm like, yeah, I can't remember the guy's name probably because he couldn't. And it's like, just because he's not a star. He's not a star. <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, well, you're right. And so, uh, yeah, he basically, he's one of those people who likes to hire people to do a job and he wants them to do their job. That's kind of the way. Here's a business lesson that I've learned in business class. It is very counterproductive and in some ways self-destructive to micromanage. If you have somebody that's in a position to do what they're going to do, let them do it, let them let them succeed or let them fail. You're going to more likely get success if you give them guidance, but let them do their thing then constantly control everything they're doing. Because if you're going to do that, then you might as well just do it yourself. Uh, Matthew Underwood says something about the difference between professional and professionalism, which uh, he's not nailing 100% in a statement, so we'll move on. Uh, WWE equals sports entertainment by James Jackson. That's correct. Sam Retro, I think it's Ari Emanuel. So yep. way to go, Sam. Sorry it took him so long to get to it. Uh, let's see a few more shots at WWE. Um, it's easy to take shots at the WWE because it's always been the thing to do, in re especially in recent times. Ever since the WCW WWE war it, it was over, it became a lot easier to take shots at WWE. And, and in all honesty, they deserve many of the shots. But while their product isn't attitude era or even peak wwe wwf excitement you could definitely see the growth of the product and the influence of of endeavor and tko and in some states even ufc on the product and you could see the philosophy difference in the wwe with uh triple h compared to mcmahon yeah i mean there's always been a big difference, and we do see that. And so, uh, we were talking about the rating with uh, with that. And while I see your point, the truth is, Dynamite gets about eight hundred and fifty thousand consistently. I think Rampage is down around three hundred and fifty thousand. And I think uh, even on its good nights. The Friday night one's been out drawing the Saturday night one recently. Yeah, I was going to say, I think even on its good night, Collision. Well, Collision tends to go head-to-head -head with pay-per-views or gets moved. And so, yeah, uh, at its best, Collision's drawing about 300000 So uh, that, that ain't good. So... I know the TV market has changed. There's a lot more out there. The cutting cables, uh, ESPN has dropped so many hundreds of thousands of people because it used to be the main reason people got cable. So HBO has dropped that much because, again, it used to be one of the main reasons people got cable. And there's other stations out there that are big time stations that people used to pay to cable for with cord, with cord cutting. They've seen a huge loss in overall viewership. Same thing for TNT, TBS, USA Network, and all the ones out there, too. But it's still, it is harder to draw an audience. And with 200000 today is the same as like $500,000, even if it's just as short as like five, five, ten years ago. But it's really, honestly, that you have to fight so hard now for an audience of anything. 
so they're desperate to get anybody at all, which is why the two hundred thousand that rating was an instant cancelization, like it would have been. Hell, a million wasn't good enough for uh, for TNA a few years ago when it was it was doing between eight hundred and a million on Spike TV, which is a much smaller network, which a lot less penetration, and it was still doing more or about the same or higher than the best of, with uh, AEW is doing right now, and that's without. The big big stars that they brought in later that killed it. So let's segue a little bit here. Let's get to the NWA. Okay. Because one of the things that's happened since we last were together as friends and family, I was kind of waiting for Jay to join back in, but he's still probably 10, 20 minutes away. Uh, right now, I'm picturing that scene from Grown Ups where they all watch the teacher. The dance teacher and uh, do her thing, and they're not paying attention at all to the kids. That's what I picture Jay happening right now. Probably. So they got uh, NWA is on the CW app. Uh, don't know if that's where they're staying. That's. I think they only have eight episodes up. Someone out there in chat, tell me how many episodes they have up. Because they kind of started from when, and it's not even like the most recent. They started from uh, some of the episodes before the last pay-per-view, if I remember correctly. And so, here we go. What if NWA had almost I don't know if a memo went out or whatever, but almost in lockstep, all the NWA people were out there talking about how great it was just to be on the app. And, you know, maybe being on the app is better than being just on YouTube. I don't know. I, I honestly don't. But that's not a television deal. So, so there is still some people are thinking, you know, Maybe they, when Billy's show gets on, gets on CW, maybe they'll, you know, package the two of them. Maybe they will. I don't know. And so, what are your thoughts, first of all, that it's gone to the app? In some cable stations, say, some cable um, providers have that CWC app as a... Uh, feature on demand so it does give them a chance somebody might be searching and they might accidentally find it on the cw seed app and go what's this i remember the nwa name or the nwa is this uh, is this the rap group and they might <laughs> actually end up watching it you know thinking like what's what's going on or they like oh that looks like billy corgan is this uh is this about him not getting along with his bass players again so they might have you know some kind of interest to, like, to grab into it. Um, any exposure is good exposure as long as you have something worth exposing, and as long as it has a decent exposure, you can get away with it. Um, and even then, it, it's only indecent if you don't have something worth exposing. It, it's good for them. It's not the be all end all. The whole um, Netflix. Uh, Paramount Network, um, what's HBO Ma or Max now, whatever it's called. The streaming isn't as big as everybody thinks it needs to be. And one of the main reasons it's not as big is because the same reason the television right now isn't drawing ratings because there's too much competition. The reason that initially streaming was a, an alternative is because you can cut the cord and spend 10 to $12 a month and just get your regular internet and get uh, Netflix. Now with so many of them, it actually costs more to get every one you want than it does uh, cable. You know, and the only difference is you have to use a computer instead of renting a box. Well, you know, let me tell you, I'm retiring at the beginning of February. And I've I believe already, when I say it. And I've already told my boys, I go, our the number of subscriptions we have to streaming sites is going to be cut 
you know, to a minimum. So start figuring out what you watch the most. Now the boys have their own prime channels, so that's fine. But yeah, you know, it's like Netflix is probably going out the door. Uh, probably the, you know, Disney, Hulu, and ESPN Plus bundle I have is going out the door and stuff. So it can be. Uh, some comments here. Several people, Sam, Matthew, others have said that, yes, there's eight episodes. James A. Jackson says no more going up until 2024. Putting the eight up was just an early test. Well, I don't know if it's a good early test. He one's that old. Uh, Matthew Underwood, what Joe Galley said is true. I was early at W. BRC in Baton Rouge for my son's field trip this afternoon. They were pushing the app the whole time. TV is a marketing tool for the app. Now, I'm going to disagree there to a point. Uh, the apps are where people, new shows and a lot of those things, they push the apps to get go get more information, go get more story, you know, here, come see what our exclusive are and stuff like that. And news, yeah, they push the apps a lot because they can't put everything on their 30-minute shows. And so that's what they push. Uh, again, it's not a marketing tool for the app as much as hopefully people will go there and, and you know, read some of their stuff or whatever and check out some of the other things. When it comes to TV, you know, right now I can stream the Cowboys on on uh, Prime for the Thursday night football game. But when they play on Sundays, I basically have to watch it on, you know, the station. Uh, how I get the station may differ from place to place, but, you know, it's not a, it's not, you're not getting your Sunday afternoon game streaming. And, and no one's talking about moving all of the NFL games to Amazon Prime. They're not out there. They're not out there looking. You know, they tease it. They go, oh, sure, we'll listen to streaming deals and stuff like that. Or wrong stuff like that. No, they want a TV deal for them. Now, if a streaming place was dumb enough to pay them more money than a TV place, Sure, they're, they're going to take that. And, uh, but when it comes to the number of people who are going to watch it, eh, you want it on a broadcast channel. It's still, it's still going to be what it is. Matthew, you're not retired already? No, Matthew, I'm not. Uh, Here's another thing that I'm learning in business class. The methods that people are currently pushing for advertising are becoming less and less and less effective email advertising has become extremely less effective uh internet advertising has become extremely less effective print advertising is becoming extremely less effective and television advertising has become extremely less effective they're always looking for new methods right now to try to get that image to you from your from wherever they want to tell you to your eyes and to the back of your brain and it's become harder and harder and harder for them to do so because people's attention spans are lower because the way they access media right now and and the way they access everything that they do their information is completely different and it's always evolving for a long time they loved the social influencers because that was an effective method but that's become less and less and less effective both because there's so many of people that claim to be social media superstars out there but also because people are paying less and less attention to what they're saying because they know now they're only saying it because they're being paid well, there is way less ways of effectiveness but out of all the brands of marketing right now television has the lowest decline compared to everything else actual television so while we may not pay attention to commercials and we try to fast forward through them or not pay attention it compared to every other media right now the uh, the effectiveness of that advertising is dropping at a so much significant higher rate than actual regular still broadcast television 
Yeah. Uh, what's the number one thing that I see every time I log into YouTube? You know? Uh, your top choices? No, a message saying sign up for premium so I don't have to see ads. Oh, yeah. Which I'll never do. Yeah. Um, well, and it's not that I wouldn't like to, but again, how many things can I I pay pay for? And it's just like that too. You know, at this point, uh, not like got enough other stuff that I won't do. If you yep. notice too, the ads on YouTube now, they used to be two minutes. And then they got down to about a minute. And then they got down to 30 seconds. Now, most ads don't let you skip them. They're only 10 seconds long. Right, or five. Or they have the other. What I call the hopefully you're not really paying attention one. Where they're like five, six, eight minutes. Because they're hoping you're actually doing something else and not paying attention. Yeah. And so, uh, Dodie asked me what my favorite Black Pink song was. And Dodie, I've only heard two. And one was ice cream, which apparently, according to some guy I saw on uh, TikTok, it's not sexual at all. Yeah, right. And uh, the other one was do, 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 do. I don't know. D, D, U, D, U, D, D, U, D, U. And I couldn't understand him in that one. So, uh Take your pick. Whichever one you like more, that's the one I like. Uh, Jaden, you ever listen to K-pop? I have not listened to K-pop. The closest I came is there's this one stupid commercial that shows up on Instagram every once in a while for some game that has some Asian-sounding person. I can't tell if it's a boy or a girl going, do 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 da do 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 da And it's some reason it entertains me as they're trying to protect the dog from getting attacked from bees. And I don't know. It's horrible. And I like it because it's so bad. It's entertaining. That's the closest I get to K-pop. I don't know what, if it's even a K-pop song or whatever, but other than that, no. Heck, it could be this one. I don't know. It's, it's a I think the sound is supposed to be like the sound of a gun or something based on some finger gestures I saw. I'm not 100% sure. Doty, our K-pop ex uh, expert, can fill us in. When... I don't know. So, Is Baby Shark K-pop? <laughs> might be. I don't know. I was watching the people who actually do the voices to Baby Shark. So, yeah. And that was, that was scarier than watching the animated shark sing, sing it. Especially Grandpa Shark. So, then again, what do I know? All right. So, in the greater scheme of things, Jaden, plus or minus NWA on CW app. It's a plus for them, but it's not a it's not going to make them the biggest company or even the fourth biggest company in the uh, country right now how much do you think it will help them if it's never more than just an app deal it might mean another 100 buys maybe that's probably doubling what they do i don't really know what they do but the thing is, again, with the app, there's other avenues that you can get the app just besides on your phone. Again, like I know some on-demand services also offer it. So people who might not have a computer might have a TV with a box that has on-demand and they might catch it. Uh, comparatively, though, it's just like everything else fighting for your eyeballs and they need a way to get out the fact that there is an app to people who would care about it and not just the NWA audience that they're currently pushing it to. Yeah, so. All right. So, you people out there, 
Simple one word response. NWA on CW app. I don't have the ability to add polls, so I can't add it. So positive, negative, or neutral. Yes. He nailed it. Just put positive, negative, or neutral in your response. Well, if they take it off YouTube because of the app, I think that may actually be detrimental. Because until they get a better again, the they may make more advertising on the CW app because you can't really skip the uh, commercials. So they may make a few more bucks on that than they do on YouTube, but the total number of eyeballs is probably higher on YouTube right now. James H. Jackson points out that it's not worldwide. And I have heard that somebody say that they were not able to get it and they even tried by a VPN and still could not get it. And, you know, that is one of the things that some of these sites are doing now. They can tell when you're connected to a VPN. Yeah, I miss the days when you just be able to cheat. Oh, my gosh, who's that? Why is he wearing his wife's shirt? How dare you, sir? Because of the <laughs> Move your mic. He lied. He ran away again. <laughs> Man, did we insult him bad. I thought it was <laughs> Older amigos. Or, you know, since you're back, you can give us your thoughts on the NWA being on the CW app while I take drugs. Real quick, this is where I was, guys. I promise. Oh, we believed you. It's just not going to get your kids out of therapy like you think it is. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, they're 30, when they're 30 they'll still be in therapy talking about There's, what dad forgot to do for them there was no effort to get them out of therapy therapy is good therapy is great hey everyone welcome to the show oh i'm just here uh so my thoughts on cw uh, well i mean it's kind of what we thought it was going to be guys i don't know anyone who uh i don't know who you remember when the talk about CW was coming and I kept telling you guys, tranquilo, guapo, be calm. It's because we didn't have any specific information that said where the show was going to be, what time it was going to be on the air, what network it was going to be on. So for me, them landing on the CW app is exactly what I was anticipating. <clears throat> Would I prefer them to be on the network? Sure. 100%. And, but I'm not surprised that they aren't on either uh, on the network. And, um, you know, this, I, I still feel like this is a positive win uh, because I feel like at some point uh, there might be opportunity to bridge the gap between the network and the, um, the network and the app. But if that never happens, I still got to believe that there's a wide enough audience that's on YouTube and a wide enough audience that's on CW that this is going to make sense for the NWA. I mean, Jaden, correct me if I'm wrong. You're a businessman, right? I pretended to be one on television once. Um, what sense would it make for you as a business owner? Let's say that you're Billy Corgan. Would you remove your content off of YouTube and make yourself exclusive to an app when it does not pay the same amount of compensation that the current uh, that you're currently getting from YouTube? Theoretically, most likely the app probably pays him better than YouTube, which is the main reason he's probably doing it. Exactly. Um, exactly. So, but when it comes to overall eyeballs, the NWA has other aspects to try to create a source of income, including going to the television tapings, going to the pay-per-views, buying the pay-per-view online, buying their merchandise. So the more eyeballs as possible actually is that is more beneficial to them. And again, the CW app for people who may not understand computers, they some cable providers actually included on the on demand. So that's another way that it could possibly grab uh, people out there too that may not actually have a computer but have television and on demand and know how to use the remote or have grandkids and know how to do it for them. And then the other thing is the way I see it too, is everyone has been, not everyone. A lot of speculation is like it's CW or bust. Like they can't keep their YouTube distribution as it currently stands. 
if we look at similar companies doing similar things, mainly let's talk about world of wrestling, right? Or excuse me, the women of wrestling. Wow. With the momentum that I keep talking about. Wow. Is currently on local markets through television, but it's distributed through CBS. It is also on the CW on the CW app, excuse me. And then it's also on YouTube. I think that's the model that Billy should try to aspire to is having so many different outlets to be on, but you know, you've got to cross off one at a time. You're on YouTube. Currently you have a, I think like uh, over 200,000 subscribers, which is all, that's amazing. That's great. Your sh- episodes are viewing about 20,000 uh, views a week. Again, that's great. But if you can transition and get yourself on CW, secure some better uh, ROI on the uh, cost to produce the show, now you're you're double dipping, right? You're getting the money that you're making from the CW app and you're getting YouTube money. Now you're now you're starting to make a difference. You still have the eyeballs of YouTube. You have the prominence of the high, a higher return on investment from the CW. To me, that's a win. A, that's a big win for the NWA. I have not heard anything about them removing the YouTube content. I haven't heard that they're pulling content. Off. This isn't the fight deal where they were exclusive. And if it is, that's news to me. Here's something I'm going to use a uh, DK. You're, you're still muted, but here's something that uh, I'm going to use an old technology to make a modern analogy. Remember the Savoldis? Yes. The Savoldis had a library of product of content, including they were making new stuff for NWA on fire and, and other things out there, but they had their old content from ICW. They had what they owned from global. They had what they owned from, uh, world class or anything they uh, that they have had content yeah. they controlled. They they even released uh, the the uh, Dave Marquez's stuff in Australia. Do you remember that? Yes, I don't know if he knew that or if he gave permission to do that, but they did it. Yeah. Um, did not. But yeah, they had content and they had their content on like seven or eight different stations plus syndicated throughout the country. And how they did that is they sold advertising, and the more places that they were able to put that advertising, the more money they were able to make. So they were selling basically the uh, commercial spots of all these different stations, and they were putting them on all these stations. And then they had this big lump sum of viewers that they could say, I have this many viewers, and this is what you guys, you know, they pay them for that many viewer potential viewership that they were able to make money in that market. Well, not quite in the same genre, not quite in the same ability, not quite in the same success rate. That's what the NWA could be doing right now. They could have themselves in many different places and find different ways to put them out there. Um, I can't remember, but there was a, there was a wrestling company not long ago that had like five or six different ways you could watch them. You know, at different whether it was on YouTube or Fight or isn't that MLW right now? It might just be out. It might have been MLW. Yeah, where there's a couple different ways and different stations and different things you can watch them. Even Sinclair found some success running Ring of Honor cheaply on their own station. You know, the the money can be made out there. I think you just the way that a big station paying to be on there is a lot going to be way, way harder, especially if WWE does show up on on uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. Then it will leave the ability to make any money on television very difficult for anybody. But it can be done because there's a lot of independent stations out there. If the religious networks don't buy them all up, there's still plenty out there. <laughs> and and that's you laugh, but that's unfortunately what is happening. Oh, no, that's not a joke. I mean, look, uh, that happened to Dave Marquez out here at KDOC which has been a long independent program uh, TV station for probably 50, 60 years. It was an independent TV station. And when the last uh, two or three years, it was bought out by a, a, uh, a, a Christian uh, television network. Hey, the <laughs> Royal class got its syndication going through a Christian broadcast network. Yeah, it was called the Christian broadcast. Network. 
Really? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. We're, Their first I, big run into putting themselves out of Texas was in the Christian Broadcast Network. Well, do you remember that they were really big, like in Israel, because it was the world class, like was on pirated. the program. <laughs> yeah, they were pirated somehow. Oh. The station pirated their uh, their show because Israel had like guess a slightly different rules, and they just decided to put it on there because I think somebody liked it and wanted to watch it. And put it on, and they became huge in Israel. The Von Erics were over in Tel Aviv as much as they were over in Dallas. They were huge over. That's why they actually toured there occasionally. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was it was the same group that owned uh, the Seven Hundred Club. Oh my God, the Trinity Broadcasting Network. Yeah. Wow. So that. They, they started on the local station here, which was 33 at the time, which oddly is now our WB station. And uh, that's, that's where they started. And then because they had stations other where world class got them syndicated. And so they would literally do the thing like uh, the other syndicated shows where they would take a day of on Mondays that come in and do all the promos to insert in the tapes it was back in the days when you actually sent a cassette tape to the station to play. And, uh, they, uh, you know, they would record the local promos for, to go out for the show. Who, who owns, who is owned by scripts, uh, EW scripts. Do either of you know that? Mm -mm, I don't. So I, I was just looking this up and I saw a variety article from a few years ago, but uh, Scripps is the company that bought Ion Media that used to be the PAX Network, which was like a, I believe it was like a fundamental Christian channel. And then it, it's changed where they, I think they do like reruns of like the Ghost Whisperer and things like that. And uh, I don't know, EW Scripps, I, I feel like that sounds like some, uh, that sounds familiar, like maybe somebody... Um, Maybe they're the ones that bought. Uh, oh, I don't know. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out who they are. EW Scripts. I'm not familiar with them at the moment, or at least not in my brain. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, I do want to point something out that we were talking about earlier. We we're talking about WWE having stars now. You know, you can't see them, Punk you know, not WWE and the like. But one of the reasons why having stars is such a big deal to TKO, which is uh, the parent company here, is yeah. Endeavor is, you know, a media agent, agency as well. They, before, <laughs> before they got into UFC and everything like that, you know, they represent talent. Well, I, th I think Endeavor is actually... Um... I think in our, our friend Billy worked for Endeavor. Billy Wood worked for Endeavor when they were a talent agency or more focused on that. Well, I mean, well, they still are. In fact, some of the wrestling people have contracts with them. So it's just interesting, you know, because we're saying there was definitely a difference in. Uh... To answer your question, Jay, was I on? Ion is what? Scribs Network, one of the Scribs Networks. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, I know that they bought Ion, but I was wondering, like, I thought they had recently. <laughs> they used um, to run news networks, if I remember. Yeah. Well, like our... I, I was just reading that uh, it was a, the company itself was founded in 1878 by Edward W. Scripps, which started off, it was a newspaper. Yeah, they were a big news agency for a while. That's wild. That's funny that it, it's hard for me to believe that a company that I never heard of has been around since 1826, but here we are. Wait till you look up what Nintendo used to be. Oh, I know. It used to be like a, a card game company, right? Yes. And a, a, a what I, I don't know what, how to pronounce it, but the, I think it's like Pachico or something like that. Kind of like the pinball game. You're looking at Pachinko? me. Like, Pachinko? Is that what it is? There's a game called Pachinko. I don't know if that's what it is, but... Well, it's not important. What else were you guys talking about? I desperately wanted to listen in 
to the show, but uh, I was in a noisy auditorium with kids quite literally singing and playing instruments. So I wasn't able to hear much of anything. Uh, what did you guys cover so far? Uh, CM Punk, uh, Camille, um, Pachinko. That was, that was it, Dodie. Thank you. Um, Godzilla. Did you talk Good about stuff. the Marvels yet? We did not talk about the Marvels. It was I didn't say it, so I really had nothing to talk about. It was extremely okay. See, and you're one of the nicer reviewers. <laughs> yeah, well, I my standards are low, but like DK and I were talking offline about some of the movies we've liked. Like, uh, I was not a big fan of Morbius. I thought Morbius was garbage. It was way better than Morbius. I wasn't a big fan of Venom 2. Venom 2 was slightly better than Garbage. It was way better than Venom 2. Um, I liked it better than I liked uh, Aquaman. Uh, I would probably put it around the same level as uh, uh, Black Adam. <laughs> to which my response was, that's not a very high bar. <laughs> no, but it, Black Adam wasn't awful. I just kind of felt... I feel like movies in Hollywood are getting rushed too much now. They're not giving me story. They're not. It's the same problem I have with a lot of wrestling booking is you're not letting me get invested in the characters before you try to do something cool with them. Um, Noob wants us to get to uh, the NWA power highlights. You guys want to do that? something else you want to talk about? Did you guys talk about the upcoming shows that are coming up? Uh, this no, week? I, we haven't gotten there yet. Well, I was kind of waiting for you to show up to talk NWA. Okay. Well, yeah, we were kind of stalling. <laughs> I'm I'm here. Let's do it. First and foremost, uh, you know, we were just talking about the CW app. We were talking about what's going to happen with the NWA and CW. Would you guys be blown away if I told you there's an a group of people who think that the NWA might land on the channel itself? And there are a lot of whispers, a lot of communication, but a lot of people think that paranoia a signature live event where they're showing you right here the cw logo is very visible on the poster not a fight logo right not a youtube logo the cw logo is right there a lot of people are speculating that this might be an event that will be broadcasted on the network now once the wwe starts airing on the network all bets are off but as it is right now the only wrestling that's available on the CW network is women of wrestling, and it's not in every market. So there is a possibility that this might be a special event. I'm not trying to pull the, the cart before the horse. I don't know for sure, but I've heard people speculating that it could be a CW live event. Jaden, as a somebody who's involved in the promotion of pro wrestling, what would a live event be like for the NWA if it's on – not the app, but the actual CW network. You can get CW without having to pay for television. You could also get it from Tubi or a lot of other uh, other sources. If you, if you don't have CW live, if you don't have antenna or whatever, and you can't pick up the station, you don't plug it into your toaster, then you can get eyeballs on it for free. And that's huge. I was again telling you how about how advertising dollars have dropped tremendously and the advertising effectiveness has dropped tremendously, but, and they're all going downhill, every form of advertising out there, but the televisions while still dropping in value is dropping at a lesser rate than the, all the other forms of advertising that they're out there right now. And that's still huge. So you can get eyeballs out there on the NWA and get new fans and get new people watching what they really need to do, though, if they really want to make something out of this, they need to make an investment in themselves and let everybody know that it's going to be on that station in what day and what time. That means doing all those forms of advertising, which are less and less effective, but do whatever you can to get it out there. Scream it from the hilltops if you have to. One of the things that I, I, I am kind of proud of the NWA for doing, and of course they could be doing more, uh, but Billy Corgan is such a um, sort of word I'm looking for. He is a enigma. An enigma wrapped inside of a riddle. You know, like people want to know about Billy uh, Corgan. A uh, uh, Matt Riddle. Yeah, 
Well, sure. And if if Billy Corgan goes Bro. out and does press releases, you know, press press junkets, you know, do that whole circuit with you know somebody like Thrill Billy Silas Mason, somebody like EC3, hell, somebody like Kenzie Page, and literally go from town to town. Uh, you know, of course, it should be, you know, the main focus should be in Florida. That's where the event's going to be at. But go into the major markets where if it's good, if big if, if it's on the network, they should be doing press releases, you know, good day, LA, good day, New York, wherever, and get on TV as much as possible. I feel like if Billy Corgan's involved, more uh, media companies would be more likely to embrace that. And even if not, I mean, Jeez, one of the things that keep crossing crossing my mind is why isn't Billy Corgan going to some place like MTV and doing a show where he has a concert and the NWA at the same time? I'm sure that that would be something that would be interesting to uh, MTV, who, and I think who owns MTV? It's Paramount, right? Yeah. Okay, well, that's probably the reason then, because um, if they're going to do that, they can just get on the Paramount network. Well, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, a foot in the door. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. they're not paying. MTV doesn't want the NWA, but MTV wants Billy Corgan to do stuff with the channel. I'm sure of it. Yeah, but they don't have music. That's right. Do they even Maybe. know who Billy Corgan is? They they don't do music on them anymore on MTV. What about MTV Two? Is that still a thing? I don't, haven't had cable. MTV Ocho. <laughs> MTV the Ocho. <laughs> 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 it's Rock and Jock. Uh, Old episodes of Wrestling Society X and uh, Beavis and Butthead episodes. <laughs> that would be cool. What did you say, DK? I don't know how to respond to that. You you cannot. Matthew Underwood does uh, remind me that MTV2 is still a thing. Yes, Paramount. I've been saying that for a year. I know that Paramount... Uh, I know that Impact really left a bad taste in Paramount's mouth in terms of pro wrestling. That doesn't mean never say never, but you know when Billy mentioned the top twenty, that was one of the companies that was on the tip of my tongue as well. Yeah, but they're twenty two. <laughs> I'll I'll take it. I'll take twenty two. Yeah, um, and honestly, the Paramount, if they could get something with Paramount, that also could potentially mean they're instead of on the CW app, they're on the Paramount app. Yeah, and doesn't at one time I think Paramount used to own a piece of CW. Uh, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, and I, I don't also know if they know, still do, but well, what'll what'll be interesting is you know, and I'm sure you guys already talked about this, but wherever the wherever Raw lands is really going to dictate a lot of things. It, the rumors are that they're going to land. The 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 rumor is the big buyer right now is TNT, TBS, Warner Brothers, Discovery. If that happens, you know, there goes AEW. I'm sure they're not going to you know disappear into the night, but. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure they will have suitors for that show as well. They do pretty good numbers, just not as good as the WWE. But if they, you know, they could land on uh, Fox, a Paramount, uh, Amazon, all, all the places that we've been talking about before, you know, even an FX with Disney, all these things are still viable. Um, and when the, when the big promotions finally lock up their homes for 2024 that's going to give opportunity for the smaller promotions to find a new home in 2024 because there'll still be some players for that kind of content uh and of course Dodie wants to bring up that the food network is one of the top 20s and who's ready for the tyrus culinary spectacular on the food network nobody how many turkeys can tyrus eat in one sitting i say 523 uh you know, look, going back to all this at the beginning, I, you know, there have been stories. I've heard the term TV taping for the, for the January show. I've also heard stories they might try to pair up the, the Billy behind the scenes show with maybe uh, some of the NWA show, the power shows, you know, with it maybe more current it's possible it could be on the network i mean look i don't know what the deal is i've never known what the deal is and uh billy said tv to me a tv deal is different than a streaming deal so we'll we'll see 
uh, in the greater scheme of things, like you said, what happens once NXT starts? What are the actual deals? How long does it actually last? I mean, it's just, there's so much we don't know. Yep. That it's very hard to be overly excited about anything. This is true. And, you know, look, if they would do that show live or, you know, in a battle, old battle of the belts thing like Florida did. Uh, you know, that would be a good thing. It would be a great thing. You catch more people that way. And so, and with, and then, you know, you, we were talking about pushing to the app earlier, you know, oh, you know, the news stations push the app. I mean, this is something, if you could do the occasional live show, yes, you can push them to the app then. And, and, and just because their uh, model is different than say like a Peacock or, or like a Netflix or an Amazon doesn't mean that there isn't value in that for the, for the network, for the company offering that distribution and for the shows that are appearing on it. We have to, we have to kind of rethink about things just because one company does it one way. Doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. You know, um, I, and I, I, you know, again, I don't know specifics. I haven't sat in any one of these board meetings with Billy Corgan or the president of any of these networks I don't know what's being talked about, but the the one thing that I know about Billy Corgan is that he's very protective of his IP, number one. And number two, he's found a way to make money, even going against the grain for all of his entire rock career. Now, this is pro wrestling. It's not rock music. However, there are some parallels between the two. And one is he's very protective of his IP. And number two, he's not going to take steps backwards unless it's going to move him forward. If he leaves YouTube, if he's going to go off of YouTube and he's going to shut that down, then he's he's either making more money from the CW app than he was making on YouTube or he has a bigger next step. As far as – and again, I don't see a reason to leave YouTube unless like unless the money is, is taking you off of YouTube. Um, all right, let's get to some more NWA news because I know – you guys have already been talking for a while. Got about half an hour left till show is over. So let's let's talk about some other things. Of course, uh, this tomorrow night in Cleveland, Ohio, the uh, Exodus Pro, Exodus Pro NWA Exodus Pro holds its next event, and we know that they will be uh, preparing to crown a new um, NWA Midwest Champion. I believe the first round of this tournament starts. Um, they'll be. Uh, there's some tri- there's two triple threat matches, um, one involving Lord Crew, and I'm sorry, just pulling up the names right here real quick. Excuse me for one second. Uh, we've got Lord Crew. Uh, where is it? Sorry, it's Lord Crew and uh, Cal Harrow and the cer- and Certified Lucas Curtis in the first round, uh, a triple threat match to help crown the um, NWA Midwest Champion, and then in the second round, it's Dante Smiley. Versus Dante Casanova, Dante with an O, Dante with an A, I don't know, and AJX and a triple threat match. These guys are more uh, local for the Midwest group. This is more of the Exodus Pro guys. Um, I'm sure they'll be announcing more names in the tournament uh, for the next show. We also ha- will see the Slime Balls who have recently uh, started appearing on Power. They'll be in action against J Rocks and Rex, Bro- uh, Rex Brody. Um, the Beautiful Disasters, which is the Space Cowboy, Stace, uh, Stacey Alexander, and Avery Bro versus uh, Heath Slater and uh, NWA newcomer Celeste. Carson Drake, who we just saw challenge Mims for the TV title this week on TV, he'll be with Aaron Stevens, will be taking on Man Bun Jesus with the Groovy Grizzly. And like the the bear suit is actually a panda suit, so I, I don't know what's going on there. A uh, the match that you all should be looking out for will be Tiffany Nieves versus Misa Kate. That match could definitely have some implications for the women's division if the storylines blend over from Exodus Pro to Power and vice versa. And, of course, in a World's Heavyweight Championship match, Psycho Boy Father with the Psycho Girl Angelina Love will be challenging EC3 for the 10 pounds of gold as the main event of Colder Weather, again, presented by Exodus Pro. Um, 
Angela should have changed her name to Mutter. Hello, Mutter. Hello, Futter. So, um, and then just some of the pictures. I forgot to pull these up, but this is uh, the beautiful dis disaster versus Heath, Heath Slater and Celeste. This is the slime balls versus J Rock and Rex Brody. Uh, Carson, the slime Drake. balls look like they're uh, if you ordered if you ordered um, Matt Riddle on Wish. Yeah, I I don't know about them. I'm not too excited. I know a lot of people are. I'm one of these guys that I got to see it before I'm going to buy into it. But uh, yeah, and then of course uh, that's uh, Carson Drake with Aaron Stevens, and uh, yeah, I mean that that's definitely a panda head, not a not a bear head. And uh, of course, uh, Psycho Boy and Overman EC3, and then and then the very next night, our boy, our boy EC3 is going to take that ten pounds of gold to Great Lakes Championship Wrestling, where he is going to be defending the title, and I believe this is for the second time against former world champion Matt Cardona. Now, this is going to be part of Blizzard Brawl. This will also be part of the premier streaming network. Uh, the um, is it PWN? Is that what they're calling it? I don't know. But uh, again, this is a huge matchup for the NWA. I, I I don't want them to mess this up. I believe at the WrestleCade, I think they, they just kind of uh, messed around with this match. I think this has so much high implication for the NWA, and a good showing between these two could work down the road in an NWA ring, not just for the NWA title. Jaden, I mean, what are your thoughts on a Cardona versus EC3 program? It should happen, but it should happen on NWA television. So they'll probably tell pretend this one doesn't exist. You know, put no interest at all into it. But if EC3, one of the things I think he needs to do be to do to help himself establish himself as a top level NWA champion is to defend against some former NWA champions. Well, there's three of them currently working for the company. If you count Cardona, so you got Cardona, you got Murdoch and you got actually four. Cause you got, um, Tim storm and, uh, Jax Dane. And he, so defeating former NWA champions can be a big deal to help solidify his claim as NWA champion and, and to help, um, vindicate his reign so i think that'll be great for him to do such a thing to have him defeat cardone at an actual nwa program and same thing for murdoch and, and jack stain and uh, uh tim storm and anybody else to help he can to help improve Trevor getting murdoch. the nwa name out there that was important right now so whether it's on the premiere network whether it's on some local independent uh, promotion or whether it's on the CW app, the NWA needs to get out there, needs to get the name out there so much now. So everything they can do to get the NWA name in a positive is still a good thing. Um, DK, is that a match that you want to see? Uh, uh, Mar I almost said Markova. Markova? Uh, <laughs> I always like watching Markova matches, but that's another story. Why? Cardano doesn't win. Cardona versus three. Is that what you're asking me? Yes, Do I sir. want to see that match? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. I think it's a good match to make, but I'm not personally particularly interested in it. What, what would be a match that would excite you with the former champion? I mean, we, we know that they did uh, Jack Stain versus um, EC3 at the uh, Sarasota show, the return to uh, Bo Roberts. Return to Roberts. Uh, so, what matchup would you like to see EC3 take on, uh, like a, a former World Heavyweight Champion? Former NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Let's yeah. I mean, let's kind of keep. Jaden made an excellent point that beating a former World Champion kind of helps solidify that you know EC3 is the man. Theoretically, we haven't heard the results of that matchup between Jax and EC3, but. Uh, I still see EC3 with a belt, so I assume that he wins the match or at least retains the title. Who do you who who's left standing that maybe you'd like to see get a shot at EC3? Okay, hey, guess without the end. Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, let's let's go through them. So, uh, Tyrus is retiring. Of course, I wouldn't have been interested in the rematch anyway. Um, 
Murdoch would be a good option, I think, just in the NWA in general. Cardona, I think, is a good option within the NWA. Again, it's just not a... I'm not personally a fan of Cardona. Same. And, and again, I, I think the problem is the NWA dropped the ball with Cardona. I think everybody else works used him better. Yeah. Everybody 100%. else used him better. I felt like the NWA was chasing what everyone else was doing. Yeah, and I, I, I'm not going to... I think Jaden's right there. I think there's... I mean, I've never been his biggest fan anyway, but I wasn't a Sack Ryder fan. Uh, what about, what about, here's a name that we haven't heard of from a while. His birthday just the other day. What about Rob Conway? He doesn't wrestle. If he did, I'd love him. He doesn't wrestle? Are, are you sure about that? Or is that an I, what you think? I haven't seen his name listed on anything in the current wrestling. That's time I saw anything. He was getting into bodybuilding. I mean, he is 51 years old, so it's not like he's a spring chicken. His last match was March 26, 2022, against Sergeant Ledbetter uh, at uh, at the Golden Ticket Battle Royal at the uh, Battle of the Belts Night of Champions. I mean, if they could bring him in for a short program, sure. I mean, that could be interesting. He, it, here's the problem. I mean, like another option would be Tim Storm, but Tim Storm's nearly 60. And, you know, you're, you're starting to reach the point where he's in better shape, but I don't want to start thinking of Tim Storm in the same way that I'm thinking of Ricky Morton and Ric Flair and others, you know. What what would be your thoughts on somebody from Japan? Like, I know it's not le- likely to happen, but, you know, Satoshi Kojima has now been out here multiple times wrestling in AEW, wrestling for MLW. Uh, would you like to see that happen? A Kojima versus EC3 in an NWA ring. How old is Kojima? I'll find out for you. And anyway, no, unfortunately, as somebody who was a huge Kojima fan, uh, he is not the Kojima that I remember watching. I don't think Kenzon even wrestles anymore, but he's another former champ that I don't know. Muda definitely doesn't wrestle anymore. You don't want to see Sabu in the ring. Yeah, I mean, it, here's the problem. Dan Severin? Ken no. Shamrock? No. no. Not Raven? No. I don't think he wrestles anymore either, but... What, Abyss is working with the WWE? Well, here's a question. So I mean, killings. Here's a general question. Is there anybody outside of Nick Aldis... That is a former NWA champion that you think would benefit EC3 by winning. I mean, he could go through and beat all these former world champions. No. But outside of Jack Stane or uh, Murdoch or whatever, who's he? who's he beating that wrestles regularly is – you know, in any type of contention for the title. So. No, that's a great point. I agree with you. I don't think there's a single wrestler out there today that legitimizes EC3 anything more than he's already done. I think or the you, people that are currently in the NWA. Right. Um, I, I mean, just from just... I think it would be better for EC3 to go out there and wrestle some of the top wrestlers that are on the free market right now. Like, you know, I don't know what's happening with Jonathan Gresham right now, but he would be a guy that, Hey, let's do that match because that's by many people. Gresham is considered to be one of the best wrestlers in the world. You know, that to me, I think would have more um, merit to it than say him beating Kojima. Not that I don't. And I, my opinion is different than Jaden on Kojima. I would love to see Kojima uh, wrestle in the NWA and still, I wrestle anywhere, but to, to the to the point, I don't think that's the best use for the world's heavyweight champion. I mean, I yeah, I really don't know. Uh, I guess if there's still some free agents that are out there that are available, I know Ryback. No, no, apparently he's going to retire. Yeah, 
he has to retire for the 18th thousandth time. There are some people out there, though. Back. But, okay, like, we know apparently a lot of people want Shelton Benjamin to go to AEW, and there was even some mock-up things, but I don't think he's ever signed that I know about. So, like, if he's still available, on the, he's somebody I think you could, you know, you see, here's the thing is, where do you put him? I'm, I'm against just bringing in somebody and immediately sticking them in a title match unless they're big enough to sell it by themselves. So is Shelton Benjamin one of those people? I mean, in my mind, probably yes. Uh, as opposed to somebody like Mike Knox, who is more interesting now than when he first came. Because now we've gotten a chance to see him wrestle and, you know, build up and stuff like that. And I don't even know if he's still around. Uh, no, Jay. Feed me less, Jay. Feed me way less. <laughs> don't, make, uh, don't make me start treating you like I've treated others. Here's the thing to, to DK's point. If you had a person in charge who knew how to build matches and stars and programs and build up challengers. Yes, I think Sheldon Benjamin could be a great challenger down the line. I think Richard Holiday could be a great challenger down there the line. Go. There you go. Now that's the answer I want to hear. Somebody like a Richard Holiday, I think, would be excellent. And and but, if you could get Hammerstone before he eventually leaves MLW to the next project. Even James Storm could have some, even though he's way down on the list he's got a personal presence enough that again if somebody knew how to build a challenger i think he could have been something interesting he could have, um, been, something. He could have been a contender could have been a contender stella could he, sorry could he um, have anyway but there are people out there that i think could be free agents either out of the wwe out of aew um if they knew how to build them up properly, there are people out there that I think could make a difference. And I think if they're going to be on the CW proper or any station proper, they need to start looking into those people. Yes, it's great to pick up diamonds or zirconium in the rough, but you also need to pick up people to know how to, to work with these people to make them into stars. It's a lot harder to make stars without stars to make stars. Does that make real, sense? Yes, but real quick, our friend Doty said, bring Calvin Tankman to the NWA. And I just happen to have a clip of Tankman. So without any further ado. What was it, Tankman versus a battleship? Jesus. <laughs> KLD. I, you know what? I'm okay. I don't think I need Tankman to be brought into the NWA. No offense. No offense. Don't it might have been no who offense. he's against. I've seen him against better stuff, honestly. He but... looks like Mims ate Willie Mac. <laughs> what about, and you know who I think would actually do well? Because I just saw him a little bit on a Ring of Honor um, program, and there was Willie Mac, since you mentioned Willie Mac. The thing about Willie Mack, and I got to be honest, okay, so one of the cool things about uh, having Mecha Wolf in the NWA is he is such an international presence with AAA at this point. He's wrestling quite a bit in AAA. Willie Mack, as well, is getting booked a lot through AAA. Like, he's at all their major shows. I almost feel like Willie Mack at this point is working more shows in Mexico with AAA than he is in any promotion in the U S and, you know, I know for a while there, he was still associated with impact, but I think those days are long gone. He, if you could get Willie Mack back. Awesome. But you're always going to play second fiddle to that triple a money. Yeah. But do they have to worry about that? It's as long as he's available, wherever their TV tapings are. That's true. Well, and again, what is the purpose of the person? Is the purpose of the person to help get your champion over, or is the purpose of the person to win the title? I, yes, like, there should be part. There should 
Any championship you have, you should have eight to ten credible challengers that could potentially win that championship at any time. If you don't, then you don't need that championship. My desire would be to have somebody who could win uh, the audience and bring more eyeballs to the product. So when you when you say a guy like um, uh, Rarefied Air, uh, what's his name again? I can't think. Richard of Holiday. Richard Holiday. He's a guy that I think can draw in some more of that indie fan base. I think a guy like Calvin Tankman might bring in some more of an indie fan base. If they're selling tickets and sell and, and people are buying seats and buying merchandise, then then yeah, bring them in absolutely. But like a guy with no no disrespect to you, Doty, you bring in Kevin Lee Davidson. No one's paying to see a Kevin Lee Davidson match. Like that's just yeah, he's not. That. He's not there yet. Maybe if he keeps working and people get more spotlight on him. But if you brought him in the NWA, look, we have big men in the NWA that are good. Like, you know, Wrecking Ball Ligurski. We have Jay Bradley. We have Jack Stain. We don't need a Keith, we don't need a Kevin Lee Davidson. As far as Keith Lee, that's a little bit different because he's, you know, he's an AEW. And, and in, in terms of Brian Keith, Brian Keith is an excellent worker too, but Again, I feel like he's getting so many dates on the independence. I don't know that you can lock a guy like him up. Here's what the thing is. If you have somebody who knows what they're doing, the people that you might not know could be excellent future assets. But you really need to know how somebody, somebody really needs to know how to create stars. And if you can't, I mean, honestly, if you're smart enough, you can create, if somebody has the ability to be molded, has that ability to be a star, they need somebody to focus that energy and focus that light, then they could be it, you know? So it doesn't matter whether a former WWE guy or somebody you've never heard of, if you could market it correctly, nobody ever heard of Goldberg until he showed up on WCW and next thing, except maybe a few football fans. Next thing you know, he's one of the biggest stars in the WCW ever had. They marketed it somebody with something special right. And that's what you have to do. Well, and, and another thing is how important how important is it that if people don't know what's going on behind the scenes, such so like, you know, you bring up Willie Mac and you know, Jay goes, Well, you know, Willie Mac's really in with AWA right now, and you know, that's where he's getting his bookings and everything like that. Triple A. AWA has been around for a while. Yeah. Triple A. Sorry. It's you mean the Sheik's not still the AWA champion? To, it's obviously getting close to bedtime. Uh, but so Triple A and everything like that. Well, if Jay hadn't just said it, I wouldn't know it. And so, you know, where's the, where's the fine balance of, you know, that could. I could bring Willie Mack in. The average person out there, even indie fan, probably doesn't know where he's getting his booking. But you know, whatever. And if you can do a story and make people think, you know, maybe, you know, maybe just maybe, then that's fine. And if the and then VC three vanquishes Willie Mack and he goes, you know, back to Mexico or whatever. You know, what difference is it to us? I, I do like there to be at least a little bit of name value. I mean, like, you know, we can't, we can't assume everybody knows current indie hot guy. Sure. You know, because honestly, I don't. And, you know, I know Richard Holiday because I was following MLW. Yeah, when he used to be good. Yeah, when it was good and he was part of it and everything. And so, uh, so yeah, I'm familiar there, but I shouldn't assume again, average indie guy knows who that, who that is, no, that's they, fair. you know, and you know, they may, they may not. Uh, I would think Richard holidays semi well known on the independent circuit, but like you gave whatever that name was, uh, uh, was suggested. It's like I've never heard of him. I don't know who he is. I don't know who he looks like. Calvin Takeman or the KLD. KLD. Yeah, I think he's not to spell it. I think KLD is uh, that uh, Wrestle Max St. Louis is his promotion. I don't know that he gets booked very much outside of there. 
moving gears a little bit because we were talking about uh upcoming... real quick can i add something in real quick yeah absolutely i don't think they should be going after quote unquote indie names at all do you know who does really well with their product with their promotion kevin kelly he's got a promotion called axw he bought into it they were running the hamburg field house until that was being sold out now unfortunately and no longer gonna be doing wrestling because the building's being sold but they've been doing really well and occasionally that. they bring in a name quote unquote name but in reality the most of their names has been uh the monster factory guys and notorious mimi because she had a little run in nxt otherwise it was all just like local people Okay. And they were drawing huge. Look up the crowds of the ha at Kevin Kelly's Amber Fieldhouse shows and how well they're drawing. And it's just because it's good promotion, good wrestling, and actually promoting right. Um, but there is no big names. They weren't bringing in these huge big name stars or anything like that. And they were out drawing most of the people, promotions out there that are bringing in the big name indie darlings and all that stuff. So. And now they're starting to bring them in to grab a little more attention, but they were already doing well without them. Well, that's, that's the like, thing about good promotion. If you could build, you can build it right. People will come. Well, and that's like a, a promotion to me. Like that makes a lot of sense is, is, uh, you know, Joe Kazan and promotions. Now they're based out, uh, I think in, um, I want to say Northern Tennessee. I could be wrong. Geography is not my strong suit, but uh, they've done a lot of, big shows um you know without using big names their 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 talent has been mostly a combination of locals to the joke is on a promotion that are you know always on the show like freya the slaya or the heat seekers uh, but then they've also introduced a lot of nwa talent like right now uh they've had uh, i believe the southern heavyweight champion is um throw billy and of course, they're having this event that's coming up on Saturday, uh, this weekend. And and you look at this poster, and it, geez, it looks like an NWA poster. I mean, uh, you've got the country gentlemen, of course. You know, <laughs> their sons of Joe Cazano, they're going to be there. But there's uh, there there's uh, you know, the the world junior heavyweight champion Colby Carino, the women's world champion Kenzie Page, Trevor Murdoch. Uh, Mims, the TV champion, will be there. The Southern Six will be there. Rolando will be there. Misa Kate, uh, Magic Jake Dumas. And then, like, you see a sprinkle of talent that wasn't currently associated with the NWA. And then, of course, our boy uh, Jeremiah Plunkett somehow got on the poster, too. So, like, uh, this is an event uh, that's happening this Tuesday, or excuse me, this Saturday. And, uh, of course, with Billy Corgan on the poster, uh, with everything that, uh, all the rumors that are st uh, spinning around, you know, on Tuesday, I reported that FTW had joined the NWA, but now that's being uh, disputed and, and that they're not a part of the legacy. They're not part of the uh, affiliates or the um, partners of the NWA, uh, but there's a big rumor. That's almost a guarantee slam dunk that Joe Kazana promotions are going to be invited to join the NWA as the next affiliate. Uh, Jaden, as someone who was an affiliate of the NWA at one point, uh, do you think this is a good move for the NWA? Yes. Um, if they're going to do the territorial system, it's a good territory to do. And it's not going to make the smarts happy. It goes it, the, This poster right here and this kind of agrees with what I was just saying. I don't think they should go after the smart market because the smart market is the a fraction of the wrestling market. The wrestling promotions that seem to draw the biggest crowds try to draw people who have no idea who the flavor of the week is. And the wrestlers that people like Chris, Big Chris Dog, um, fellatiate themselves to. <laughs> Shit. They have no idea who any of them are, but they draw much bigger crowds. And I think that's something what the NWA and other promotions need to learn on is there's a lot of wrestling fans out there who don't care about the currently flippy do person out there they want to see good quality wrestling and that's what they can you know the nwa could make its niche to do if they had the right way to do so and the kazana's a private example of somebody doing that uh dk i mean what are your thoughts uh well first of all the florida promotion brian idol's promotion yeah 
which, by the way, I've noticed they've basically started calling him Brian Idol now all the time. So, what, what was the name he was using in the NWA? Mercurio. Mercurio. Yeah, so. Ma, ma, curio. You know, oh. apparently he's going back to uh, Brian Idol. And it, there's a storyline going. Basically, he was telling Billy was at the promotion and said, well, you can join the NWA, but you got to give up the title or something like that. It was. It, it was weird. And so by the end of the night, he was still champion. And so Billy said, you can't be a part of the NWA, and, which is weird since his world champions currently. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't try to make a storyline out of it. Cause it's, uh, it's too backwards, but uh... yeah. And so uh, that was the thing, but yeah, uh, I think Joe Cassano promotions, you know, but I want to jump on what J- Jaden was saying there. The foundation to anything, and this might be uh, part of the failing of the NWA uh, under under Billy, but the foundation to any wrestling promotion is you wrestle somewhere and you put on what those fans there want to see. Right. And you can get hot. Then, if you want to expand or get uh, more coverage or run a small territory, then maybe you bring in people with a little bit of names so that, you know, you can get some uh, attraction outside. I mean, really, I think you could probably be a pretty successful wrestling promoter if you're not in a crowded area as far as wrestling promotions are concerned. You put on what the locals want to see and you can put on a couple of shows a week, you know, between different towns. And maybe, you know, like one show is your big show a month at your main place. And, you know, you'd probably be better doing that than trying to get on TV, trying to, (laughs) you know, trying to expand regional wide or whatever. You know, put on a good product. Sooner or later, people are going to find you and discover you, and you know, want to be want to be a part of that. And so, uh. funny, but uh, yeah, uh, Jaden. I mean, what do you think? It, it... Of like, you do I think that they really should build a grassroots and build themselves up? Yeah, a billion percent. I don't think Billy has the ability to do it as a booker. I disagree with that. Well, well I think he. Billy's he's, kind of, he's kind of proven he already has. Now, remember when they started this version of the Lightning One era, they went with Tim Storm. He 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 was the one that launched the NWA. It wasn't long before Nick Aldis took the title. But when they started, when they started Power, right? How many superstars were on Power the first season? Jim Cornette, right? And then who else? Bram, you know, uh, Tom Latimer had a name and impact. It was Bram, but he wasn't a superstar. Nick Aldis was a former TNA world champion, but again, he wasn't really the higher, the highest commodity that he was, I think, after his time in the NWA. They brought in James Storm, who was well-known and in a former impact world champion, but again, not – Never, never got that WrestleMania moment. Uh, you brought in. Uh, he was undefeated in the WWE, though. <laughs> sure, um, that's a great point. But then you look at the rest of the roster. I mean, they they had a uh, Ricky Starks. Nobody knew who he was. Zicky Dice was a nobody. Uh, uh, looking at that roster, they brought in Thunder Rosa. Um, I think it that was a pretty big, significant move. But most people knew her from Lucha Underground. Uh, you know, you looked at the. You know, Melina was there, but she was in the role of a manager. Uh, they had uh, they had uh, Allison Kay and and uh, Marty Bell, uh, but the rosters themselves were very kind of small. Trevor Murdoch was one of the most well known names on the roster, and again, that's just a former tag team guy. Uh, they they started with not a lot and were able to build up some names to create value 
for companies like AEW. Thunder Rosa certainly had more value after being in the NWA. Ricky Starks, although his time was short, similar, had built up a pretty good reputation with the NWA. Uh, Zicky Dice went on to do, I don't want to say necessarily bigger, but had, you know, he had his job with uh, Impact for a short time. Um, you know, uh, Vixen Wrestling Club brought up uh, Mr. Kennedy. And yeah, I mean, they also brought in Scott Steiner for a minute, but I wouldn't say any of these guys were superstars when they brought him in. Real uh, quick, yeah. who did they have when they were doing all these big these big things that they don't have now? David Lagana? Yeah, it wasn't Billy, it was Lagana. That's fair. As much as we were complaining about things that were annoying us with Lagana, boy, when uh, it, it, we miss his NWA way more than I, maybe I'm wrong. You know, again, he wasn't perfect, but he brought something to the NWA that's missing, I think, right now. I would love to have uh, a Mulligan and, and have uh, Dave Lagana back in the NWA with this much momentum that they have right now. You know what I mean? Like, if I feel like they're at another level um, in terms of their reach, in terms of what they're able to do. Um, I would love to have Lagana back, but uh, that's not going to happen. No. And yeah. in reality, they got all their interest also, not all, but a good, very big chunk of their eyeballs was because of Jim Cornette. Yeah, 100%. I don't, I don't disagree with you with that at all. Um, I, I feel like there were, they had a lot of positive things. We've talked about it before. Jim Cornette being there was a huge one. I still feel like they got a lot of help from all in and having uh, Cody and Nick Aldis have such a high spot on that card. Yeah. And there was a lot of being the elite that built up that match, a lot of the 10 pounds of gold that built up that match that I really feel between the Cornette uh, fan base and the hanger-ons from after All In, I really felt that that was a driving force for the Lightning One Era NWA. And, of course, things have changed a lot sig pretty significantly since then. Um, they still have some momentum, I think, going forward right now. We're seeing it with the CW. We're seeing more live events than we've ever seen before. Uh, you know, maybe the pay-per-views numbers aren't where they want them to be, but they're still producing these uh, higher level pay-per-views, which we haven't seen that from the NWA. Like, look, if you go back to 2019, uh, they didn't do this much work. If you go back to 2021, they weren't producing this much content. 2022, same thing. They weren't producing as much content as they did in 2023, and we're going forward to 2024 now. I will 100% agree that right now the NWA is the best it's been since the post-original season of Power. I, I Maybe agree. even the post-second season of Power might be at least close. Yeah. I think ECW, ECW, EC3 <laughs> is a high spot and a good leader to move them forward. I just don't 100% have faith in... Billy's booking. And, and, and you know what? You could be right. And we'll see what happens. Obviously, the next big show is going to be on uh, January. What did, I had it up here a minute ago. January the uh, 14th? 13th. Uh, that's the next big show. That's going to be the next step. Everything else until then is just kind of a wait and see. Uh, like I did mention earlier before, though, uh, we have one more title match that's set for this month. Actually, I believe there's two, but I only have the graphic for one. And that's uh, on Christmas Chaos for OVW on December 16th. Uh, you know, just a short five days before, uh, not five days, nine days before Christmas, EC3 will be representing the NWA in that World's Heavyweight Championship as he returns to Ohio Valley. I mean, that's, that is very telling in it of itself. OVW is not at the moment an affiliate of the NWA or connected in any other way except for EC3. But you see the 10 pounds of gold right there over his shoulder next to uh, uh, Hollywood Haley J and uh, uh, Freya the Slayer and an NWA logo. I mean, that's how telling is that? I think that's it's huge. I, again, again, DK, I'm sorry. I was just saying that's a big positive. I mean, yeah, the more NWA is out there. I'm not going to argue that they are not in a better place because they are. Yeah. We just, we just need to see if we need to see if they can ride this momentum. I, 
really, I think things would be a lot better if Billy would, I say it like this, but if he would relax and just finally get that chip off his shoulder. Yeah. I mean, I think so, so often I was pointing out how, boy, the NWA, you know, had their people ready to go when they end up on, on the CW app and how, you know, being on an app was just, you know, the greatest thing. And, you know, there was like, you know, kind of like the Tyrus, if you got to tell me that it's a great thing, it's probably not. <laughs> or at least not as great as you were making it out to be. And that's where we always have to be careful. I think this is maybe one of the places where Billy fails a little bit sometimes. You know, uh, just say, hey, you know, we got to, we're working on a deal, might be TV, might be an app, you know, whatever. We're just, but we're going to get something that's going to be serve us better than YouTube serves us. And, or in addition to YouTube. Or, yeah, in addition to YouTube or whatever. And like, I haven't heard whether it's going on or off YouTube or not. Uh, I know what in a earlier, early while we were talking, I know our pal Paladin had mentioned that there was talks that Billy wanted to take the show off of YouTube. And I know I heard him say that on, on the interview that he had with Busted Open Radio. Um, and I still think that might be a long-term goal, but I, you know, the money's got to make sense. Even, even if they move to a different streaming platform, you know, there's a lot of companies that are streaming on different platforms and still have a viable YouTube channel. That has tons of content, you know. Uh, WWE, AEW still release matches. Impact still release matches on uh, on YouTube. There's still a viable uh, platform for pro wrestling. It might not be as marketable. It might not be as uh, revenue generating as say being on a streaming network. But uh, again, if it's if it's if it's all you're doing is uploading a video to YouTube. Why wouldn't you do it? Well, I mean, using it to promote, so to speak, you know, show or whatever. They, yeah, I mean, there's no problem. Having a social media presence is almost a requirement these days. Yeah. Uh, you know, the question is, do you have a show? And something might be an ultimate goal, but I think until, you know, you would lose a fan base that's outside the United States if they can't watch it. So, other than Doty, though, who buys their pay per view? Well, uh, well, they, they, they do have a few. I mean, like our our pal uh, Tim, our pal Tim in Canada, Fiona, uh, Fiona in uh, Scotland. I mean, there are yeah, but but Canada's America Junior, but they don't get the CW but up there. They don't get CW because it's because it doesn't end with A. That's why. Hey, hey, maybe, but just, I mean, just in general, you, there, there are, you know, things would have to be worked out. Things would have to be worked better and have, it would have to make sense. And I, I think a good example of this might've been the original deal that they had with fight where everything was exclusive to fight. And, you know, they may have made more money on that deal than their YouTube show. But based on the numbers that I'm hearing on pay-per-view buys, it would surprise me if they had more than 500 subscribers. Yeah. And possibly less. And so it was like you had a hun- you had 100,000 people watching the show, and now you have 500 people watching the show. You're not going to get big on 500 people. No. And so, yes, it may have been better money since, and it may have been better after the pandemic. But was it, you know, at some point, if you want to grow, you have to get your, you have to get eyeballs on you. You're, you're speaking my language. Everything you're saying is 100% correct. Um, it, it's, and, and I, the, the thing that I used to hate so much about the fight deal, right, is that, I feel like it was so short-sighted because they were coming off of the pandemic. Billy didn't want to keep sinking money into the NWA. Uh, some of you guys might not know this, but there was a very good chance that the NWA was going to go away during the pandemic. 
and he was still paying some talent, not all the talent, some talent were still making pretty good money sitting at home, making sure that they didn't get COVID. And uh, as, as reputable as that is, as cool as that is, it almost bankrupted Billy Corgan's wrestling company. And if it, it wasn't almost bankrupted New Japan, it almost yeah. I mean, it I know it hurt. <laughs> it hurt. I mean, basically, that's what ended up putting ROH uh, under the AEW umbrella is that they never recovered from that. No, so, it like, was bad investments in sports networks is why that happened. Well, but the, it, it didn't help. But <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think it was. They were definitely. The NWA had a lot of momentum before the pandemic. Pandemic happens, they lose all the momentum, and then you know they have an opportunity to get a payday. Well, hey, if we go exclusive to fight, we're going to get some of this some of this uh, return on investment. I'm sure they made more money being on fight than they did on YouTube, and I still think they probably make more money when they were on fight than what they make on YouTube. But I feel like uh, that was a short sighted move because you can't grow being on fight. And their YouTube numbers never really... They never returned. Never returned. I mean, they they went from drawing around 100,000... There were, there were episodes that hit that 200,000 views, you know? Yeah. 200,000 views, guys. How I many would... people How many people currently are, have watched the CM Punk uh, return? Five million. Plus. It was five million a few days ago. See, you put on something, something one people want to see, they'll they'll find a way to see it. So, I think that's probably a good place to wrap it up for tonight. Um, obviously, I mean, we could talk here for another two hours if we wanted to, but uh, you know, I know it's getting late on the East Coast, and uh, I'm sure you you guys are getting <laughs> kind of tired of talking for two hours. So now is a good time to wrap it up. But uh, next Thursday. Unless something changes, we're going to have a special guest with us. Um, hopefully, I don't want to jinx it, so I'm going to knock on wood and I'll tell you the name. Former NWA World Tag Team Champion, Mecha Wolf. Oh, man, I thought he was going to be right back. I <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to try to battle him on a, on a TikTok and I'll see if I can record it. Let me know how that goes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, before Wait, we leave, are you gonna battle wrap them? Because I'd like to see that. I got barbs, baby. You don't want really to go to town with me on that one. Hey, Jaden, I heard that there's some more news coming out about the next dangerous adrenaline wrestling gladiator event. Could you please tell us about that? There's two of them, and potentially a third that I still can't talk about. Well, let's hear the two. What do we got going? What's brewing? What's first of all working? on Thursday evening, April 11th. At Rowan University in Glassboro, New Jersey, dog Is will that be rustic returning. Glassboro, New Jersey. No, that's the, not the rustic part. That's the actual uh, invested money part. Okay. Um, but dog will be returning to Rowan University, and it will be a car that starts at 9 p.m. exclusively for Rowan. But as of right now, you'll probably eventually see those matches on YouTube, and then. Uh, no stars or anything named on that yet, other than uh, you know the regular wrestlers from Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators, like Chris Steeler, the World Wrestling Grand Prix Heavyweight Champion, like the Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators Tag Team Champions, the Old School Empire, all the great wrestlers you usually see in uh, Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators, plus their Devil Dave Doll. And don't you dare cheer for him, Jesus! Yeah, not if you want to live. Hey guys, so I'm looking at the WWE YouTube site. And so we're talking about star power and stuff like that. And what brings things up. Uh, guess who is in a lot of videos that they've uploaded recently? Go ahead, guess. Uh, CM Punk. Our yeah. truth. CM Punk uh, interviews. CM Punk. Full CM Punk career story. Uh, CM Punk proclaims himself best in the world and must see uh thing. Uh, let me see what else, because uh, I've seen some other stuff here. Uh, CM Punk states he's home. 
Full match, CM Punk versus The Undertaker, Hell in a Cell, 20, or 2009. Yeah, so there's they're showing not only his more recent stuff, they're reposting his old stuff. Milking that cow for everything they can. One day ago, they put up the You're right, he likes to sell out buildings there, Paladin. He was tired of having that uh, wide open uh, hard cam section. I love that meme, by the way, where it's like, "Oh my God, there's people on the hard cam side." I think our boy, I think our boy, our boy Hebes made that one. Yes, I was trying to give him some, <laughs> but yeah, and that's where star power helps. And speaking of star power, Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators will have another event on Thursday afternoon. April the 25th at the Rowan College of Burlington County, again, exclusively for the Rowan College of Burlington County crowd. And already signed for that is former WWE star Ricardo Rodriguez, former WWE Ring of Honor and OVW star Tank Tolan, uh, current Ring of Honor and former Ring of Honor and former Impact and former NWA star Rhett Titus. And again, World Wrestling Grand Prix heavyweight champion Chris Steeler will be there. The Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators tag team champions, the Old School Empire, will be there. All the great wrestlers you used to see, you're used to seeing at Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators. And of course, also Daredevil Dave Dahl. Woo! Woo! No, he won't be there. We can't. We don't have the energy drink to fund it for us. That's not only that, but you don't have the liability insurance to afford that. DKM. What? My friend. How can folks follow you on the social media? Why would they want to do that? Because you're so damn energetic and charming. Oh, I can see that. Uh, at DKMFWTX. Don't forget to follow his, um, his uh, not his Twitch page, his, not his Instagram page. No, no his TikTok follow. page to watch him dance to those K-pop. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you do that. Oh, and then uh, while we're I, talking I about... I actually added my first video. I saw <laughs> I liked it. I saw that you liked it, but did you like it? Yeah. I, I Sure, I like uh, Dungeons & Dragons. Why wouldn't I? You added the Dungeons & Dragons video? I have to watch that. It's just, it's just a video of me transforming into a Dungeons & Dragons character. The, I, had um, do, I had to do it like eight times before I was willing to post it. Was it Tiamat? Uh, no, you just have to go see. Okay. My beard, I, looks, my beard looks much better as my uh, character. As an AI Dungeons & Dragons character. Hey, I also want to plug, uh, again, we were talking about Dangerous and Drowned Wrestling Gladiators. I want to plug their YouTube channel. Uh, you know, Jaden alluded to it that some of the matches will show up there, but uh, they currently sit at 921 subscribers I'm going to tell you this. Once they get to a thousand, I know that we're, we'll probably have a few of the guys from Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators come on this show to hype it up. But uh, I, I'm thinking we'll do a giveaway, and maybe we'll give away uh, the uh, a, dare, a date with Dave Dahl. No, I'm kidding. No one wants that. Not even Dave Dahl's girlfriend wants that. Can we? Can we give away Jay? We uh, nobody wants that either. No offense, Shane. <laughs> But maybe we'll give away some uh, Alliance blog merch once they hit to 1,000. If you guys could be so kind as to help us grow that channel, uh, it's uh, youtube.com forward slash dog pro wrestling. Uh, it's great content. And if uh, if Billy wants to leave NWA, well, then, heck, let's make Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators uh, a, a place that you can go to watch wrestling on YouTube. Um, and then, of course, uh, we'll be here on Tuesday. I will be here on Tuesday as the pre-party continues. Pre-party! That's right, man. We'll also be talking uh, about next week's power, the fallout that's happening here this uh, weekend with the NWA and the two big events that are happening, plus the two title matches, all that. We'll be talking about that on Monday. Wednesday, the other guys will be talking some MLW, some NWA, and then, of course, on Thursday, we'll have more of a... Uh, a, uh, a menagerie of topics to talk about when Jaden DK and I return next week. Oh, Speaking actually, of the other Alliance guys, I heard Kokushi was on there talking smack on me, and apparently, according to um, to Tim, Kokushi might actually have been Hisa in disguise. 
I don't think it, I don't think they're the same person. I've seen them both in the chat I, before. Well, I don't know. That's what Tim was saying. And if so, I didn't know we had Heehee, so I thought I thought we were cool. <laughs> I love your site. Turns out, not so much. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here every each and every week. This has been one of the best months for the Alliance blog uh, since we've been on YouTube. Uh, you guys have really helped the channel grow. We're up to eighteen, uh, or sorry, one point eight k subscribers on the channel, and it's growing every day. And that's all thanks to you guys who have been commenting, liking, sharing, and doing all that cool stuff. Watching the shorts. Really grateful for you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll be here next week and probably the, the rest of the month as well. Uh, I think we'll be uh, closed on Christmas and probably New Year's Day as well. But outside of that. Uh, That's our Thursday this year? I don't know. I don't no, have a calendar, Andy. I, Christmas. I think it's Christmas is on a Monday. Christmas on a, is on a Monday. So, yeah, we'll probably New be here on a Tuesday. On Monday, but, yeah, because uh, they're seven means, days apart. But we probably won't. Well, well, we'll see. Well, I'm sure we'll be here some way, some form. Uh, but again, thanks guys so much for checking us out and hanging out with us. Maybe you should make a uh, Alliance Guys omnibus. What the heck is an omnibus? A bunch of footage already recorded and then put into one long two-hour, three-hour thing. Uh, we already do a long two-hour, three-hour thing. <laughs> yeah, I but you know saying. the good stuff. So I'm sure you maybe could find something in the last two, good at least two hours of good stuff in well, the last. Do- uh, what I can do yeah. is just start clipping all the interviews. That's the good stuff. Or Jaden hey. jokes. Hey. Or DK dancing. TK yelling at the clouds for three hours. That'll be a hit. Buy his GK yelling at the cloud t-shirt. Did you ever uh, get that video recorded for Tim? No. Or you just all of a sudden remembered it? <laughs> I... I don't think Tim was 100% serious about it. So let's just say that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then uh, if, thanks. If he is 100% serious about it, then I'm more than willing to do it. But I, I'll give you five bucks if you make a video yelling at Dave Dahl. Oh, I, that I can do. <laughs> let's talk about that off air. I got to go eat dinner. Have a good night, guys. Until good next night. time, we'll see you at the matches. Thanks for joining the stream. This has been a presentation of alliance-wrestling.com. We genuinely appreciate your support. Would you consider subscribing so you'll never miss a future episode? I'd also like to remind you we do a live stream every Tuesday at 5 p.m. before NWA Power. You can find us on social media at The Alliance Blog. And until next time, we are The Alliance.